roaming supers got a pretty massive buff in Act 2, allowing you to recharge them at roughly three times the rate and deal up to 55% more damage to champions. This is essentially changing the way you use your super. Instead of them being a oh sh button, we can now use them more often to mass clear our enemies, creating more orbs in the process and increasing our overall survivability. So buckle up and get ready to learn about the new and improved Crown of Tempest build. Let's get into it. With the exotic helmet Crown of Tempest, we can get any arc ability or jolt kill to gain a stack of conduction tines. This can stack up to three times, giving you a maximum of 503% grenade, melee, and super recharge rate. This also decreases the super drain on passive supers. And while you could use this with a super like Song of Flame as I did in this video here, I'm opting to use it with Storm Trance, aka Tickle Fingers. And that's mainly because of the new rework, meaning that as we deal damage, we'll be getting getting back three times more super energy, paired with the 500% regen rate from Crown of Tempest. This now means that you can basically pop your super whenever you want. In just one run of Contest of Elders, I got my super back in less than 30 seconds multiple times. I will be using the Prismatic subclass since we get more damage and overall survivability, but this can absolutely work on the Arc subclass as well. So let's dive into the build and break down how it works. As we mentioned, we're bringing the Storm Trance super, since it now recharges faster and deals more damage to champions. Plus, it's easy to stay in for a long time, since all the kills you'll be getting are arc ability kills, giving you stacks of conduction tines, which slows that super drain rate. And for the class ability, I'm taking Phoenix Dive for its mobility and instant health. For the melee, I'm bringing Arcane Needle, mainly because we get three charges, but we'll touch on why that's important in a second. For the grenade, I'm bringing Storm Grenade, not only because it's super strong, but also because we need arc ability kills to keep up those stacks of conduction tines. And that's also why for the first aspect, we're bringing Lightning Surge. Now, we can slide and hit our melee button to blink forward, summoning down Lightning Strikes, damaging and jolting nearby enemies. This is great for keeping up your Conduction Time stacks, since kills will give you a stack, but also any enemies that aren't killed will likely be killed from the jolt damage afterwards. And this is why we bring Arcane Needle, since we can now have three separate charges of Lightning Surge, leading to more time at full stacks of Conduction Times. With the second aspect, I'm taking Feed the Void, since we already get 500% grenade recharge rate, the grenade energy you get back from Devour is nice, but not needed. I'm mainly taking this so that we can fully heal ourselves on any kill once we activate Devour. You could swap this out for Bleak Watcher if you want. That way you can mass generate stasis turrets, but it doesn't have as much survivability. As for the fragments, the first fragment I'm taking is Facet of Courage. Now, any light damage that we deal to targets that have a darkness debuff will deal 10% more damage. This means we can simply use an Arcane Needle to deal some extra unravel damage and then get 10% more damage from all of our arc abilities, which will only be compounded on later. Next, I'm taking Facet of Protection, so that while surrounded, we gain an extra 15% damage resistance. Then I take Facet of Dominance, that way our storm grenades will now jolt targets, leading to a higher likelihood of guaranteeing a kill and stacks of conduction tines. And this also makes our prismatic grenade weaken enemies. Then I bring Facet of Awakening. This is always a good option when your main source of damage is arc damage. Now, rapid kills will create an elemental pickup, and for arc, that means the incredibly strong Ionic Traces, which will pair nicely into our later artifact perks. Finally, I bring Facet of Sacrifice, so that we constantly gain more Darkness Transcendent Energy, just from getting ability kills, and this is because we'll nearly always be amplified or have Devour active. So what does this look like in action? Well, you want to constantly use your Grenade and Lightning Surge. With the whopping 500% Grenade and Melee Regeneration active nearly all the time, you'll be able to constantly spam those two. And if you run out of Ability Energy, use your weapon that jolts targets to help keep up your stacks of Conduction Tines. Otherwise, you can transcend to immediately gain back all of your Ability Energy, and then pop your Super whenever you feel like clearing a ton of enemies. One helpful tip is to bring a weapon like the Lost Signal Grenade Launcher to generate a ton more darkness energy and transcend more often. Otherwise, keep spamming those arc abilities. And if you're enjoying the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to see more content like this in the future. So let's talk about ways to improve the build. For stats, I like to aim for 100 resilience as a baseline, and then I aim for at least 50 intellect since this not only shortens the super cooldown, but also gives you the maximum amount of energy for all super regeneration methods. Then I aim for a mix of strength and discipline. Both will regenerate quickly, and both will also give us stacks of conduction tines. When it comes to armor mods, for the helmet, 
I like to take an Arc Siphon to help create a ton of orbs and consistently gain back more ability energy from our later mods. Then I bring two copies of Hands On. I find that since we have three charges of our melee, I end up using it more often, and this will just help generate even more super energy. As for the gauntlets, I'm doing something I rarely do. I'm bringing three copies of Heavy Handed. This makes it so that we can generate an orb of power on a melee kill every second. I like to bring three so that if I want to use my lightning surge back to back, I can create an orb both times I use it. And for the chest mods, just like for most builds, I'm running three resistance mods. I usually go for two elemental resistance and one melee resistance. That way, the melee resistance plus faster protection will help keep you alive when using your lightning surge. As for the leg mods, I'm taking invigoration so that every time we pick up an orb, we get back 10% melee energy. Then I take two arc weapons surges so that we can deal 17% more damage with our arc primary and heavy weapons. When it comes to those class mods, I first like to bring outreach so that whenever we use our class ability, we get back a bit of melee energy. Then I bring time dilation so that we can keep our weapon surge active for longer, which can be helpful in DPS phases. And finally, I bring powerful attraction. Now we collect any nearby orbs by using our class ability. With Act 2, we got some new artifact mods to play with, and they help out this build a ton. One of the main perks we want is arc compounding. Now, all arc damage will deal 15% more damage to blinded targets. This is why bringing something like Grand Overture is a good idea to blind targets with that missile volley. You then want to bring trace evidence, so that two precision hits against an arc debuff target will create an ionic trace. You jolt basically everything, so this plus facet of awakening will lead to a ton of ionic traces. And that leads me to the next artifact perk, Curative Orbs. We want to bring this one and boost it with a tonic. Now, the first time you break an enemy shield, you create an orb, but when it's boosted, all orbs or elemental pickups will now give you a bump of health. And this is huge in case you can't guarantee a kill in hard content like Grandmaster Nightfalls. And don't forget to bring Concussive Reload if you plan on bringing a grenade launcher to add in that weakening effect for champions, bosses, and anytime you break an enemy shield. If you have a teammate proccing stasis debuffs, then you can bring Conductive Cosmic Crystal to add another stacking 5% damage for all of your arc abilities. And when it comes to the weapons, in the kinetic slot, I like to bring a heavy hitting backup weapon. My favorite option is the Lost Signal, which is a stasis area denial grenade launcher. This helps to build up your darkness meter, but will also allow you to apply that weakening from this season's artifact. Otherwise, bring your favorite alternative weapon. The new stasis rocket assisted sidearm from Iron Banner can be a good idea if you want another way to stun champions. For that energy slot, I really like to bring a jolting feedback weapon to create more gel overall and possibly proc stacks of conduction tines. Volshot weapons can also do the job. You just want to make sure you're proccing Jolt with this weapon. And in the heavy slot, I like to bring another arc weapon. Grand Overture can be a really good option to proc blind and deal a ton of burst damage on a boss, but it can be a bit annoying to use in normal gameplay. Anarchy is another good option to proc that weakening effect and deal some extra damage over time. Or you can bring something like the new Bittersweet, which has some really good damage perks to help melt bosses. With the new changes to roaming supers, I'm loving Crown of Tempest. If you're looking for builds that use roaming supers, the next three Fridays I'll be producing a series covering some Warlock, Titan, and Hunter roaming super builds, so keep an eye out for those. But remember, mastering this build is only the beginning. Experiment with different combinations and tweak your loadout to suit your playstyle. If you found this video helpful or just enjoyed seeing a new perspective, feel free to like the video and comment down below what you might change or how you'd improve the updated Crown of Tempest build. Keep an eye out for future videos as we continue to explore the ever-evolving world of Destiny 2. Until then, may the threads of fate be ever in your favor. This is Lucky Mech, signing off. See you on the next Adventure Guardians.